been uh, working at UBC since 2002 and before that I was an undergrad student here and I know like many of you I did start sort of on a temporary contract basis and did a series of those before I uh, started full-time uh, with UBC and uh, it's a great place to work I've had the amazing opportunities and I've worked with incredible teams and feel feel lucky to go to work even if it's in my bedroom right now uh, every single day so I'm happy to be here um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our team and what we do and, and the sort of the move to the virtual event space in light of the pandemic. And um, yeah, we'll look forward to connecting with you guys after the breakouts. So Jenny, we can go to that next slide, please. Thank you. So our team, uh, ceremonies and events, we have locations on both Vancouver and the Okanagan campus. We have 11 team members in Vancouver and three in the Okanagan. And our job is really to um, plan and deliver UBC's um, institutional events, academic ceremonies, um, recognition and other events on behalf of the president, uh, the chancellor and other leaders at the university. Um, and we also have oversight of the annual United Way campaign. Um, in, a, in a regular scheduled, sort of regular scheduled programming pre-pandemic, pre-COVID times, um, we typically work on 80 to 100 events a year. And, how we work on them um, varies a little bit. Most of them we, we plan in full, but some we plan in part and some, some we consult on or provide guidance and advice. And in this sort of current reality programming, we're doing slightly fewer events um, as we've really considered which in-person events we, we pivot to the virtual space and which ones we pause. Um, and that's what I'm gonna talk a little bit about today. Uh, I do want to acknowledge, I, I can see a number of my team members are here in the room and uh, we really are a team. Everything we do is as a team and I want to give them kudos because they do amazing work to, um, to help us in regular scheduled program and in current reality programming times. Um, collectively, we couldn't do what we do without every single member of the team. Um, so let's talk a little bit about pivoting to the virtual space. Jenny, I'll get you to move to the next slide, please. So we've been um, moving to the virtual space, like all of you since, oh, I don't know, what was it, March 16th or something like that. And um, I mentioned in my last slide that, you know, we, we've really been thinking about what to pivot and what to pause. Not every event in person makes sense to move to the virtual space. And I know many of you will be facing the same thing in your work. Um, we are by no means the only event planners on campus. Um, some things make a lot of really good sense to do online, but others don't. And um, so we've, we've needed to make some of those decisions. So we've been working over the last several months to assess all of our events that we usually do. Um, take a look at different objectives for events, um, the formats, um, how they are sort of normally or usually delivered. Um, what are the opportunities to deliver them now? How could they look different? How could they look the same? How might we change um, our invitation list? You know, we're no longer dealing with a capacity in a room, but a capacity on a, on a platform, and that's generally a little bit more flexible. Um, what is the platform? What are the technologies available to us? And what kind of resources do we need to, um, to deliver those events? Um, this virtual space is an oppor opportunity. Um, it's giving us a chance to really flex our creative muscles and think about how to do things differently. Um, and uh, allowing us to innovate a little bit in different ways that we haven't before. Um, and, uh, you know, we very rarely get the opportunity to uh, reinvent the wheel. <laughs> and this is now a time for us to do that. Um, and as we're reinventing the wheel, we're actually giving ourselves some new templates to work off of. Uh, because we don't know how long this is going to go on. Um, you know, we're only months into the pandemic. Um, we don't know if we will ever get back to what that, you know, old normal was. Um, and we also don't know what the new normal looks like. Uh, we anticipate, we hope that there will be a return to in-person events. But we also know that it will take a long time for people to be comfortable going to in-person events and some in-person events over others. Um, we also anticipate that there will be lots of people who really like events in a virtual space, prefer events in a virtual space. In many cases, we have a broader reach. So we anticipate that there's going to be a new normal that incorporates some of this current reality. Um, 
And then, you know, as we've been pivoting and as we continue to pivot into the virtual space, there's a lot of learning going on. Um, you know, whether it's learning what we can uh, do without, what we want to keep, um, what platforms are great, what platforms are not so great, um, all of those pieces. And so those are some of the, those are some of the things that are going through um, our team's minds as we're moving in this virtual space. Um, Jenny, I'll go to the next slide, please. So I'll talk through a few different examples of some of the events that we've been working on in this new virtual space. And this is by no means an exhaustive list of what we've been working on. And in fact, uh, you'll see a note at the end, there are virtual events happening in units all across UBC. So I encourage you to, um, to reach out to people if you're interested in learning more about uh, their events and other events happening on campus. So we've been doing a few different events for the president um, that are really about long service recognition. And these are events that happen um, typically in person and recognize um, faculty and staff, for example, who have worked 25, 35, 40, and 50 years of service. And so that was something when we moved to the virtual space, we knew that we would wanna continue. It's really important to um, recognize our colleagues and, and we wanted to ensure that they felt recognized um, for that particular milestone. So as we've been delivering those events and we've done a couple of those over the fall so far, We've, we've, um, we've, uh, we've pulled together different pieces of the in-person experience and also added some new components. So for example, one thing we've heard that's important is to hear from the president and to hear that recognition from the president. So we make sure that he's included in the events. He's not only hosting the events, but he's in fact speaking live during the events. Um, we've provided an opportunity for those honorees to extend the invitation to people that we wouldn't necessarily be able to accommodate in person because of that room size. So different family members, friends are able to join and can help to recognize um, their friends, their family, et cetera. We've also looked at ways to extend the experience, that recognition experience from what's happening in front of them on the screen to uh, the remote environment. So for example, We've developed um, packages, parcels that get dropped off at an honoree's home that include their recognition item like a certificate or a gift that they would normally get. And we've also included some snacks and drinks for them to enjoy during the virtual event. So it feels a little bit more festive. It feels like a little bit more of a party. UBC Connects is another example. We did our first virtual UBC Connects, um, supporting the UBC Connects program and office in July. Um, we have another one in September, we have another one coming up next week. And each time we've been doing it a little bit different to try out different things to um, best accommodate both the speaker and the particular audience. So there might be some pre-recorded welcomes, there's a keynote address that could be live, there's engaging Q&A and chat features happening, and different platforms for different events or different components of the event. So that's been something really interesting to work on for our team. We've also been doing different and are currently working on different student recognition events and also scholar recognition events for the academics um, on campus. And uh, those, are, those are coming together, it's sort of a mix of um, video production that's pre-recorded and, and uh, produced and pieced together, mixed with live remarks and um, some engaging um, components around the chat. So for example, as you're watching a video, and you see your friend on the video being recognized for whatever they're being recognized, you can actually go in live in the chat and say, oh, congratulations, like so great, well done, you know, those kinds of things. Of course, graduation and academic ceremonies, we've been pivoting to the virtual space and I'll talk a little bit more about those on the next two slides. And then as I mentioned, I've had an opportunity to um, connect with colleagues on some of the events I've listed here, but there are so many virtual events, amazing virtual events and programming happening across UBC. This is a great example, hot lunch, moving to the virtual space. Um, and there's different ways of doing things and uh, so many, so many great colleagues working on those. So I encourage you to check those out. Um, we can go to the next slide. So we get asked a lot about um, graduation and how, how we pivoted graduation to a virtual delivery and, um, and, and then what we're doing now in the fall for graduation and what, we, what we're gonna do in 2021 for graduation and so on. It's obviously a huge milestone in the lives of our students and a huge um, institutional event um, for UBC. So I'll talk a little bit about what graduation usually looks like, what it looked like in the spring and now will look like for the fall. 
So the photos that you have here are very much, um, very much capture what happens in live in-person ceremonies at UBC Vancouver and UBC Okanagan each year. We graduated about 15,000 students across the system through all of those ceremonies. Typically we have 28 ceremonies in the spring in Vancouver, six in the Okanagan, and then eight in the fall um, <coughs> only in Vancouver. Ceremonies are usually about 90 minutes. They include lots of formalities, pomp and circumstance, students crossing the stage, honorary degrees, um, and, uh, and all kinds of, all kinds of uh, impressive activity on stage. Um, there are about 1,200 people who attend each graduation ceremony, um, regardless of where they're being held, and um, usually three to 400 students graduating at a time in each ceremony. So when we, um, when, uh, I, if I take us back to last February, um, we started to realize as COVID was sort of heating up around the world that this was something we might need to be paying some attention to. And in, uh, in late February and early March, we started to have some, um, some, just some brainstorming meetings, like if we have to do something different, what could that look like? And then of course, in the middle of March, we knew very quickly we'd have to uh, make it look different and do something different. Um, if you think back to March, you'll remember that in the middle of March, on March 17th, the provincial orders started to be extended around the restrictions on mass gatherings and events, and then they changed. They went from 250 to 50 people. Um, and so very quickly, we started consulting with deans, the president's office, uh, student leaders, um, the senates, the chancellor, uh, and the province as well about um, what graduation might look like, made the announcement that it would be held virtually, um, at the same time, made a commitment to students that we would invite them back in person when it was safe to do so, um, and then started to, um, to plan it out. Um, by Easter, we knew that it would, it would be virtual, it would be a ceremony as opposed to a, a, a video piece. Um, and then we, then we had about uh, six to eight weeks to, to pull that together. Um, so we'll go to the next slide, uh, which includes some photos of uh, how that spring ceremony came together and what it looked like. And I know many of you um, uh, participated in the planning because I can see some of you on screen. For example, I think I saw some folks from UBC Studios, for example, who were an amazing and very key partner to our graduation ceremonies. Um, and these, so these photos show a little bit about how that spring ceremony came together, which at the time we were um, in, in a, in a more restrictive environment than we probably are now, although it might not feel like it. Um, and uh, so we were, um, we, we did, we had a mix of pre-recorded and live, but very few live components. We'll have a few more live components this fall. Um, it included a lot of the same formalities that our in-person ceremonies hold, things like um, territorial acknowledgements and O Canada, um, but it, uh, it didn't include honorary degree conferrals. Um, it didn't include students crossing the stage. And so we needed to think about different ways to do those pieces. We also added some new components to the virtual space that we don't normally do in in-person. Um, we added a keynote speaker, which is a, which is a new component. And we also had two uh, student speakers at each of the ceremonies instead of just one. So in the spring, we, instead of doing 28 and six ceremonies, we did one ceremony for each campus and each set of graduating students. It included a 30 minute pre-show to help ground the students back to campus. And then it also followed with a virtual alumni reception. Um, it didn't include honorary degree conferrals. It also didn't include recognition of teaching prizes um, uh, or student prizes. Um, and so those, those are things that we've been working on other virtual events to help celebrate and honor those folks um, throughout the year. Um, so we can go to the next slide. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, we, you know, we do events uh, including graduation, but not just graduation. And so these are a few of the other things that we're working on right now in the virtual space and thinking ahead to uh, the remainder of this calendar year and then likely into 2021. So we do have some other fall, uh, we do have some academic ceremonies coming up this fall in November. Um, we have our chancellor's installation. So that's a chancellor will be installed virtually at UBC. And also um, the chancellor will be installed in a standalone ceremony. Usually it's incorporated into an in-person um, fall graduation ceremony, but uh, we've, we've decoupled them and, and are giving that ceremony its own time and space. Uh, so that will be held in the morning on November 25th and in the afternoon, uh, fall graduation will happen for our graduating students. 
The following day, we'll also be coming together virtually in a, in a private event for our honorary degree recipients across the system um, to share some, um, to preview some tribute materials with them, which will then be launched publicly on November 27th. Um, Remembrance Day is coming up, and this is a really interesting one for our team to work on. I've said old hat, new tricks. So Remembrance Day and observing Remembrance Day is, a, is of course, a, an extremely important tradition in our communities. And um, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, protocol and tradition that goes into planning that ceremony. And um, we, we learned very quickly that um, there are no communities who are not celebrating Remembrance Day. Um, so that was an important piece for us to um, determine first is, are we doing something for Remembrance Day? So yes, we're doing something for Remembrance Day. Will it look the same? No. Normally it's about 3,000 people in War Memorial Gym, and so we can't do that. So we are going to be hosting a very small in-person ceremony in the lobby of War Memorial Gym that will in fact be live streamed to our community. So still making sure that we're acknowledging that important um, that important uh, day of remembrance and observance and, uh, and inviting community to participate with us in a different way. Um, we're reimagining, we're continuing to reimagine things. And an example of that is, is, is recognizing Killam scholars across campus. Normally there are about three different um, Killam events over the course of the year that recognize different, different levels and categories of Killam scholars on campus. What we've done in this virtual space is, is we're hosting one and in fact we're it's giving us an opportunity to bring together even more of the virtual or even more of the Killam scholars and different um, groups and categories of Killam scholars on campus. So that we can actually recognize them all together, um, ranging from you know graduate and postdoctoral students all the way up through um, faculty members so that's that's going to be really interesting and, and really fun I think for them. We're learning a lot about digital fundraising campaigns through our UBC United Way campaign and the annual fall campaign that's underway right now. Um, obviously units cannot um, hold uh, events the same way they once could. Um, we cannot thank our donors the same way we once could, all of those types of things. So we're learning a lot about that. We're also very much thinking about 2021 and what, what the future holds. Although I remind folks that I don't have a crystal ball and I know you don't either. So. We're a little bit stuck until we sort of just see how things unfold, of course, but we are thinking a lot about, you know, what could we do in person? Um, what can, what do we think we might be able to do um, as a hybrid model? And, and what is maybe safest to keep in the virtual delivery space for now, for a while? Um, so we're starting to, um, to think through that and have different conversations with partners and stakeholders. And then we're always looking at virtual event platforms, tools, resources, and the skill sets that we need to continue to deliver these virtual events. I think, you know, we're all, we've all been living in this space now for a while. We all know that there's lots of tools out there. Some of them work really well for some things. Some work really well for other things. Some tools are free or free to us at UBC because the university has licenses. Others we pay at the unit level all of those kinds of things. And so um, we're continuing to learn um, on, our, on our team and also with our colleagues um, as we deliver different, uh, different events. So that's sort of uh, in a nutshell what, what's happening around pivoting to the virtual space and how we've been uh, carrying on with a lot of UBC's traditions and, um, and milestones and important events and activities. Um, and one of our key learnings has been that, you know, um, attention to detail in event planning and event management and delivery is critical. And so, you know, before we, you know, paid very close attention to detail in in-person events. And I actually think that attention to detail is even more important in the virtual space um, because everyone is looking at the same spot. Everyone is looking at their screen and we'll see whatever's on that screen. In an in-person event, you know, someone might be looking out the window and someone might be looking at you and someone might be looking over there. And um, so attention to detail is, is pretty key because you've got to capture, you know, their attention on the screen and, and keep it on the screen. Um, uh, and, I, and I think in terms of, uh, you know, another flash or stressful, if we could call it that, you know, in in-person events, you have zero control over the weather. You can mitigate risk around weather, but you, you have zero control over the weather. In the virtual space, you have zero control over someone else's internet connection, zero. 
So again, you can mitigate risk and you can do all kinds of run throughs and practices and trials with them on the other end, you know, if they're a keynote speaker or what have you. But at the end of the day, you know, you can't even control your own internet connection, really. We're at the mercy of the provider. And so um, that's, that can be really stressful. And I think we've probably all been in a scenario, an informal meeting or a more formal event where the internet um, has, has gone awry on someone. And that, that's really stressful just because you have to just then address it, you, you know, and that's all you can do. So I think those are probably two of the key learnings. Um, and um, yeah, I guess the other piece is that, you know, virtual events are uh, complex and in fact, no less complex than an in-person event. I think there's, there's a, an assumption or a, or a line of thinking out and about somewhere that, you know, well, you know, a virtual event is just a Zoom meeting and, you know, anyone can do that. But even a virtual event in a Zoom meeting still takes a lot of careful uh, thought and consideration and planning and, and complexities that have to be managed. So, yeah. yeah. And you mentioned platforms, uh, Liz. Oh, yeah. Have, have you yeah. used anything else or have you attended yeah. that, that you find has been helpful? Yeah. So, so we've been using, um, we've, we've been using a, a different platforms for different things. We've used both Zoom meeting, which is what we're using right now, and Zoom webinar, and those both have great advantages for different things. We've also used Vimeo, and we've also done um, uh, sort of live, live streams or broadcast streams over different platforms, and those platforms have been um, Facebook, YouTube, and Panopto. So we've done different things, and and we're we're still learning. We're we're trying out a different platform for an, an upcoming event in the in the next um 10 days and so uh yeah we continue to learn and we continue to try new things to see sort of which which tools we want in our toolbox and uh, thanks yeah and how do you um you know and this applies across the board uh, across the campus to um both all the campuses how do you keep your team motivated um particularly when so much of what they would regularly do has changed yeah well first first of all we've we've acknowledged on our team that things have changed uh you know that we're you know events are different where we're working is different um the landscape around us in our professional and our personal lives is different and so um you know there's there's some pretty open lines of communication um there's um there's pretty regular check-in both uh for the whole team and one-on-one -on -one. and that's been really good for our team to sort of have that face-to-face -face time when we can't just walk down the hall to someone's desk or stop by the water cooler and have a chat. Um, we've also made a point of doing um, some things socially but virtually so we have TGIF Friday coffee breaks and we have um, team, we had a, a team potluck the other day where the, the potluck is recipe sharing instead of uh, food sharing um you know we had a virtual picnic in in the spring and those kinds of things so um we're, we're trying to stay connected and um and that i think really helps to um to motivate everyone including myself you know being connected to my team is is important for me as well and then i think um you know just uh i i uh, i want people to be flexible with each other and with themselves so if someone needs a break from the screen or someone um, needs a break on a project or uh, someone needs to help, uh, you know, on something else or those kinds of things. I think it's just really important um, because we're all navigating through this and, um, you know, responsibilities and tasks change as a result. And so we're, we're trying to figure it out as we go. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And I want to just acknowledge the comment Wendy made here in the um, and in the chat room about, you know, um, community, how to do, how to use virtual connections for community. <laughs> you know, chat rooms and things like that. And it is, it is a challenge. And I think many of us are using this. I know I am even outside of UBC, but, um, and it's to try and make it as authentic as we can, but still have it virtual. And it's, um, but it's very, so important to do this, um, to reduce isolation. And I, and I think, you know, your ideas of the, I, I was at your lunch yesterday, the social lunch for the, the you know, and that was great. You just, you just shoot the breeze with people and it was a wonderful way. So I think that's great. Um, what was the craziest, what's the craziest day you've ever had on the job? Asking and asking the director of ceremonies, this is a big question because, uh, you know, but anyway, so Liz, over to you. Well, and I don't, I don't know if I'd admit it, you know, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the line. You don't admit it. You, there's no crazy days. Uh, but I think, um, 
Yeah, I was thinking a little bit about this question because uh, Eilish and Stacey had shared it with me. You know, for, for me, you know, not everyone, um, not everyone is an event planner and, and not everyone is kind of built for that. And for me, one of the reasons I love event planning and event management is that the more, you know, the more complex or the more complicated, the more stakeholders there are, the better for me, actually. It, it, I really thrive off of that. And so, but for a lot of people, that would be really, really stressful to pull all of those different pockets and pieces together. Um, for me, it's the, probably the most exciting, one of the most exciting parts of my job. Um, so I, I would like to reframe it as the most complex days that I've had have probably um, been some of the funnest and probably for some people they were the most stressful, but for me, they were probably uh, the most fun. Um, and Eilish mentioned a couple of them. I'll add a couple of more. Um, you know, certainly, um, you know, the joint honorary degree uh, conferral with SFU for His Highness the Aga Khan was uh, the first time either school had done anything like that and it was, um, it was a lot of relationship building there between both schools which has served us well since then it's incredible actually um, how much we can collaborate and share information now that we never would have dreamt of doing before between UBC and SFU. Um, we um, you know working on a series of campaign launch events in 2011 for the start and evolution campaign when I was in development and alumni engagement was um, was pretty incredible. The events were in different parts of Canada and the world, but also um, for different um, different degrees of, of stakeholders and constituents, and, and those were pretty fun. It was also probably the first time I had done a really produced event. Uh, we worked with a production company, and, and so that was, um, that was a lot of fun. Um, I, I also, when, we, when the university celebrated its centennial in 2015 and 16, there were a number of events that um, I took the lead on uh, in my previous role and uh, again one of the most complex yet most fun was a centennial gala we did in Hong Kong. Um, so again a number of stakeholders, uh, a variety of time zones, um, you know those kinds of things. Uh, so that was um, yeah all very complex but all, uh, all a lot of fun. Well that's it. I think you know people, people in, 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 in roles like yours um, you know you either thrive on it or you know, it's not for you. Stress is, it, it's everybody, it's the adrenaline keeps you going and it gets you, you know, but it's the excitement of the event for sure. Um, Andrew's asking, are you missing the amazing scholars catering dinner and receptions? <laughs> the food yeah, yes, the yes same. is the short. It isn't yes. the same yes. in a virtual event. <laughs> you want it's it. Not. You know, yeah. we, we would all delightfully receive a gift basket that we could eat. That's on. right, Andrew. Yeah. If scholars wanted to do that, I'm getting thumbs up from a few people. Here. We're on it. We're on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of, one of the really interesting, one of the silver linings of the pivot from in-person to virtual has been, well, the, the downside is that there are many teams and colleagues I don't connect with nearly as much as I did for in-person events. Scholars Catering is a great example of that. Um, but on the flip side of that, there are teams that we're engaged with now um, that we either were not engaged with in the past or not at all at the same level as we are now. And I think UBC Studios and AV Services are probably the best example of that right now. And, um, and I see a couple of their, their team members on the call here. Uh, so th that's been, and, and I think a lot of us on, on, on the teams that are now working together would say that, that it's been a real... Um, it's been a real benefit to working on these virtual events is working with new and different people. Um, I see Rayanne on the call too, and I'll also say the other uh, silver lining of a pandemic is that, you know, a number of us have been pulled into conversations specifically about COVID-19 that we would never uh, have an opportunity to uh, engage on. And so I lead a working group that is responsible, well, that, that talks about and supports campus events in, in light of the pandemic. And um, so there are people in that group who, who I connect with um, more regularly than I did before in, in other ways. And also through that um, and other committees, um, connecting with other people across the university that we wouldn't normally connect with. So uh, again, you get to meet new and different people and in a big place like UBC, that's a good thing. Yeah, you're right. And it's, it's a great advantage, um, a great opportunity to, to um, uh, make new acquaintances, right, of colleagues across campus. Um, we did actually chat before about St. John's College. We did explore the, um, the idea of the, um, 
of the lunches um, from St. John's and we'll, we'll revisit that again. We did uh, um, ask about whether people wanted to receive uh, what the interest was in that. So um, we have explored that and we will further about having a lunch, um, an actual lunch that you can eat. Because um, I, I know a lot of people are missing Chef Clarence's wonderful cooking <laughs> at the college. Anyway, it's, it's just after one and I, I want to respect your time. If the, if, if, unless there's any other questions, if last question that somebody has, um, I will just end by thanking people. Thank you, Liz, for your uh, great presentation. And thank you to you and your team for, for all the great work you do in ceremonies. Um, it has been quite a year for everybody, um, but ceremonies and events are such an outward facing um, uh, important uh, recognition of all the st great stuff that happens at UBC. So it's, it's really mm -hmm. important that they, that continue and important to make sure that people feel valued and, and recognized. So, um, and I know you take it all very seriously and you've done a great job. You've all done a great job. So congratulations. And uh, thank you to Jenny and Stacy for putting this together today. Um, Thank you to everyone for attending. Our next, our next lunch is going to be on Thursday, Thursday, not a Wednesday, so mark your calendar, Thursday, November the 26th. And it'll be with Dr. Leslie Cormack, who is the Deputy Vice Chancellor uh, from uh, our Okanagan campus. And so um, without further ado, uh, the URL is up there for the survey. We'll send out the survey again. Please complete it. Have a wonderful rest of the week and um, yeah, we'll see you at the next lunch. Thanks everybody.